Hello everybody, this is CJ Wiley with more Adventures on the Road. Going through a little spooky area in uh, South Carolina, going to a park. Check this out. Looks like Sleepy Hollow. <laughs> I like these little roads. Sometimes uh, my navigator takes me to some pretty precarious places though, with like cliff drop-offs on one side and single lane roads <laughs> but anyway life's an adventure isn't it yesterday i was talking about connection and how to connect to every shot the same and i got some questions which i which i encourage if you have any questions uh please leave it in the comments and i'll uh, do my best to get back to you as soon as i can i get a good track record but uh i can't do it every day so anyway i encourage the questions because, uh, hold on just a second, because that gives me a chance to, uh, you know, think things through uh, more clearly so I can express them and, and uh, you know, I encourage that. So what people were asking is, you know, what do I feel like I'm connecting? I know I said center to center or center to edge. You know, if you really know the, how the, the footwork uh, is executed, which means the left foot is in front of the right toe. The left foot is parallel to the line of the shot because the left foot has a, uh, a direct influence on your left hand and your left hand is your aiming hand and it's for structure. <clears throat> so uh, it matters where your left foot is. And if your left foot's in a different position every time, that means your left hand is having to start from a different place. Your subconscious is doing its best to get your hand down in front of you where it needs to be. But imagine how much easier it would be if you just positioned your left foot so your left hand automatically went where you need it to be. And that's parallel to the line of the shot. Watch Sky Woodward, he's uh, really good at that. He uh, told me that somebody told him it was better to stand with your left foot parallel and he just tried it, liked it, and is still doing it to this day. So uh, Shane Van Boning's another one that has his foot almost perfectly uh, parallel. He's a little closed at times. He, he changes, but, but it's always the same. Bustamante, Efren, all of them are uh, going to have their left foot parallel to the line of the shot. So when I get my feet in that position, I feel like I plug my chest and the center of my vision into that center to center or center to edge alignment. That's as connected as I can be, and that goes for anybody. The best way that we can look at something <clears throat> or connect to something is looking at it straight on. Like if you're throwing a dart or shooting a pistol or pitching a coin or, or even shooting a basketball, you want to face the target, and then the ball comes out of the center of your vision to hit, hopefully, the target that you're aiming at. So in pool, a lot of people stand more sideways, because when they try to face the ball more, their right hip is in the way. And that is a problem. Like I've said before, the human body isn't made to play pool. So you have to understand the kinesiology and how the body needs to conform to the line of the shot uh, and the two balls. Again, I have two lines. One is center to center or center to edge. And then from that, I create the angle. So I'm triangulating the angle while other people are not. And so if I don't make a shot, the feedback that I get is instant. And I know pretty much exactly why I didn't make the shot. I can make the adjustment and I can cut it off before uh, it becomes an epidemic in my game. Because you'll see weaker players, they may be playing super good. And then uh, all of a sudden they'll miss a ball or two and, and just fall apart. And that's something that a champion player cannot do. We have to continually calibrate our games. So I'm always watching what part of the pocket the object ball hits. See, that's really important too. That's the destination target. Especially if I hit inside the pocket, the inside part, the undercut side, uh, I'm very aware of that. And I'm going to do whatever I can do, especially usually in my tempo to, um, to fix that problem before it, well, you know, to cut off before it becomes a problem is what I should say. Because if you start undercutting balls, especially, um, 
that's not good. That That's going to lead to some things that you're not going to like. Because think about it. When you undercut a shot, how do you feel? Don't you feel like you dogged it? <laughs> when you overcut a shot, it doesn't feel the same. So I design my game that if I'm not going to make shots, it's going to be on the overcut side. They call it the pro side. And that also has the advantage that uh, gives you more of a chance percentage wise of getting safe and not give your opponent a shot if it doesn't go in if you undercut a shot that's pretty much going to give up the game especially if you're at a at a higher level where your opponent's going to run out with the ball close to the hole and uh, that's just not recommended so so i would always recommend uh, calibrating your shots to the center of the pocket but if you're not making them, you want to make sure that, that you're overcutting them slightly. And I'll tell you more and more about how I do that. I do it by favoring the inside of the ball slightly, and uh, that's where my primary target is. I don't care so much about the distance to the object ball because I'm using the cue ball as a primary target. I'm using the object ball just to align to center to center or center to edge to give my mind a baseline the reference point it needs to create the angle. And there's only four of them that I try to create off center and four off of edge. And one of them straight in off center to center. So really there's only three calculations I have to make. <clears throat> you can think of it either that the cue balls go into a contact point or a ghost ball point or whatever you like to do, or that the cue is creating an angle between the center to center alignment, because it's doing both. I more do the angle. When I'm coming down, my mind creates one of those three angles. And that's really a lot easier uh, to do than what you think because the same three angles off center to center, and then, you know, of course, one of them straight in, so that's four. And then the four angles off center to edge, which one of them starting out is a, is a center to edge shot, the fourth angle would be a uh, you know a super thin cut. So the same angles apply to center to center and center to edge. So anyway, that takes some experimenting. It's hard to explain it in a way that you're fully going to understand until you actually do it and see what I'm talking about. Because if you're standing center to center on your alignment and you go down on the ball and you pivot slightly to the left, it's going to cut the object ball slightly to the right. And when you pivot, make sure you don't just pivot your back hand. Pivot your body. Pivot from the center of your body, your hips, your legs, because you want your eyes to follow that tip. That's part of the connection process. I don't like the idea of backhand English because when you just use your back hand to pivot, your eyes are separated from the tip. Your connection is broken. So you can't do the things that I do pivoting like that. You have to pivot with your body. And uh, again, I show exactly how to do that in my uh, tip banking secrets, especially at cjwiley.com. So back to the connection. So I, I connect my chest into the center of the shot or center to center alignment. And then when I go down, if I'm cutting it slightly to the right, I feel like that ball's coming out of the center of my chest, like I'm shooting out of the center of my chest. That gives me, again, the best visual vantage point or perception and I connect to it better facing it square just like if you're talking to somebody and you're having a great conversation you're going to face that person and you're going to connect to them and if that person starts turning away from you it's almost annoying especially if what you have is important for you to say at least for you but you know just out of respect you know it's good to face somebody and uh you know, when they're talking, you give them your undivided attention and you don't look away or turn away. And the pool shot, as a reference to that analogy, wants the same thing. Every pool shot wants your undivided attention. So anyway, uh, work some more on that, the center to center alignment. Feel like you're plugging your chest into the center to center or if you want to use a different part of your upper body. Uh, your belt buckle, maybe, if you're in Texas, although those belt buckles are so big, it, it might not get right center to center. 
But anyway, experiment with it. Not everybody's the same. I'm just giving you the checkpoints of how to start creating a championship level game, or at least fundamentals. Maybe you don't want to be a champion, but when you get your fundamentals uh, as aligned as possible, you really don't have to practice near as much. I've never been a big practice player, an hour or two a day, uh, because I practice specific things and I'm always really conscious on getting my fundamentals as good as they possibly can be. Because consistency is doing the same thing over and over. So if you want to be consistent, I'll help you develop a routine where you can do it. Anyway, this is CJ Wiley. If you want to know more about my uh, fundamentals, systems, and techniques, cjwiley.com. Please like, share, and uh, subscribe to my channel on YouTube or my channel on my website. It's a, actually a private group. Till next time, CJ Wiley, over and out.